everybody, David Vonderhaar here, letting you know about our most recent patch to our game, Black Ops 3. This patch introduces some new features like music tracks, which had been coming soon since game launch. It only took us seven months to get the okay to publish tracks that we sold for our soundtrack, but that's how the music industry works. The other new feature that we are introducing is contracts, of which fall into two different categories, daily and weekly. The daily ones give you extra your crypto keys in order to get cool beepity bops out of the black market and to give you that dangling carrot for the ADHD in you. The weekly contracts are a bit harder to attain, although some of you sweaties might be able to do it in one sitting, with the reward being able to hire Blackjack, the 10th specialist that YouTubers without any entertainment talent have been fawning over for months now in order to get views on their channel. You're able to use Blackjack for 60 minutes or three times as much action as Stanford rapist Brock Turner got. He has two specialist abilities to choose from, but since we're too lazy to invent new specialist shit, we're just having him reuse current abilities. His rogue ability only gets powered up when he gets kills, not by standing around. Oh wait, you can't really stand around or else you'll get kicked due to our terrible design with crypto keys and AFK players. My bad. When you get a kill, you could use the specialist weapon of whatever character you just put down like a veterinarian. This means that you could use multiple specialist weapons in one sitting if you aren't a shitter. The other ability is Gambler, which earns rewards at an accelerated rate due to built-in overclock because that's not overpowered at all or anything. It assigns a random specialist ability which you could choose to re-roll. There's also this concept called a side bet, which will have a challenge for either the Rogue or Gambler ability, which when completed, you could earn a sweet-ass calling card so that you could show off to everybody in the lobby how much of a bedwetter you are. Speaking of showing off ship, there's also new items in the black market because Activision is spelt with a dollar sign. We're introducing two new weapons, both of which are energy weapons since those went over so well in Advanced Warfare. There's a shotgun which will replace the Argus as the hit marker machine but still get kills from across the universe and a handgun which resembles the plasma pistol from Halo. There's also two new melee weapons including a plane headrest pillow with teeth on the inside and a saw blade attached to a stick because that's so futuristic bro. There will also be pieces of new gear for you to play dress up just like your younger sister. Now that we got all of the stuff for us to get you to give us more cash and or time from your social lives out of the way, let's get into the fixes. Since this game isn't supposed to be paid to chance to win, we had to nerf the range on the Marshall 16s because Drifter told us to. I mean, our black box indicated this this gun was performing above expected output. We also fixed a bug with the Varric sight and recoil that everyone complained about, thus we increased recoil for multiple scopes including the Varric aforementioned, ACOG, and Thermal. Who knew that there was actual recoil in a Call of Duty game in the first place? We also fixed a bug where people could have Heatwave as a secondary item, which then turned into videos by shitty YouTubers speculating about new guns, which were old gun models put in by PC modders of which still don't even have legitimate mod tools. Lastly, on create a class items, we fixed an issue where EMP grenades were unintentionally providing a hit marker and or damaging enemies with hardwired equipped, thus rendering the perk as useless as it was in Black Ops 2. On to gameplay fixes, we did some Consuela-like S&D bombsite cleanup. We adjusted the height of the bombsite such that people could no longer head glitch for days. It's too bad we couldn't lower the 500 other objects in our maps that people stand behind to play passively. We also removed the middle gap between the bombsite, which people would use as a cheese line of sight because virgins aren't supposed to know what cleavage is yet. And since esports was our main focus, the only other gameplay we made changes to was Uplink with improvements trying to pick up a drop satellite drone so that people aren't doing the Fandango trying to scoop it up. We also fixed a ton of out-of-map exploits as if there wasn't enough cover on our maps in the playable area already. Next are some menu and UI fixes including a bunch of bugs in the groups functionality and having customizable leaderboards so you could brag about your e peam to the nearest nobody. We implemented a rainbow of colors for Codcaster mode and this isn't just a sign of solidarity with Orlando. We also added having an invite only setting for party privacy because we here at Treyarch don't have that many friends and don't know what it's like to have session joiners killing your mood constantly. Lastly, we improved dedicated server performance and stability while in-game such that these slow motion lobbies aren't a thing anymore. What's that? 
People are still getting into games more lopsided than the scores in the NBA Finals. Well, we only fix what happens once you get into a match. Nothing about how you get into the match. The last time we did that, I got depth threats from plebs about implementing skill-based matchmaking, even though idiots don't understand the nuances of filters, so no, your 5v7s will continue until further notice. Besides, that's not the stuff that makes any money, and I need a new Vonderghini.